Number five, you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to give new meaning to your life. God's Word is creative. Meditate on it. Allow God to give you a new meaning for your hurts. Listen to God. Allow Him to redefine what's happening in your life. And I believe that this man in Psalms 116, who I believe was grieving a death, I believe he found out a new interpretation on the facts of his life. The psalm starts out with the great cry of pain and a sorrow of death that we find in the midst of that psalm in Psalms 116. 116 and verse number 15 he makes a declaration and he says precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints I don't know about you but I particularly love that verse because my mom passed away a couple of years ago and sometimes I think about her and sometimes I think God you know I just wish my mom were here I just wish I could talk to her again and then I'm reminded of this man's interpretation of his life that hey all when a saint dies it's precious in the eyes of the Lord and God reinterpreted the facts of his life. Amen. When I was in Bible college, there was a man there who was going to school with me. This was many years ago. I graduated in 1982, all right? And this guy had only partial use of, of one hand and his neck. And one day, we were he was a quadriplegic, in other words, not a complete prod, quadriplegic. He could move his one arm. In his hand and, and, and his, you know, from the neck up. And he told me about his life story. How that as a teenager he was in a terrible, terrible car accident. And it left him like that in that condition. And how that as a teenager in, as he laid in a nursing home. Can you imagine? Amongst the old people laying in bed. He had given up on life. He said, I'm going to starve myself to death. They had to force feed him every day. He was so despondent. He interpreted the events of his life like, man, my life is over. There's no, there's nothing else good could ever happen to me in my life. He said, I just wanted to die. And he said, one day in desperation, laying in that bed, I began to cry out to God. I began to pour my heart out. And he said, I would lay there at night the tears would run down until my pillow literally would get wet at night. And he said night after night and day after day, he called out to the Lord. And I remember him telling me this. It was just he and I sitting there. And suddenly the tears came to his eyes. And they began to trickle down his cheek. And he said, Bob, I'm going to tell you. He said, God came to me in that nursing home. God visited me one night in that nursing home. And he, he said, this is what he told me. He said, sir... Your life is not over. You are going to be an overcomer. You're going to be an example. You're going to influence hundreds upon hundreds of people by your witness and by your testimony. He said, I want for you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I only knew this young man in college. Well, he wouldn't be a young man now. He never missed the class. He never skipped the chapel. And I'll never forget the night when we all graduated. His name was called. And there came the hum of an electric wheelchair. And as he rode across there to get his diploma, our entire class stood up and cheered and applauded. Why? Because he had allowed the Holy Spirit to reinterpret the facts of his life. Hello. He had allowed God to do something in his life. And I'm going to tell you, there's coming another day when the awards are going to be passed out in heaven. Hello. And that dear brother who's lived his life in a wheelchair chair. Amen. When, God, when Jesus calls him to receive his reward, he's not going to be in a wheelchair anymore. Come on somebody. He's going to run across there and he's going to say, Lord I allowed you to reinterpret what I've went through. Amen. A Christian psychologist from the state of Ohio, Emerge Ministries. His name is James Dobbins. Not Dobson. There's two not the James Dobson that's very well known with focus on the family. Another Christian psychologist named James Dobbins. Uh, let me give you the facts of his life. The facts of his life were that when he was born, his mother died giving birth to him. His mother was only 19 years old. And he talked about, I heard him in chapel many years ago in, in Bible college. It was a... 
a, a very painful thing for him. He said as a young man in teenage years and elementary years, anytime anybody would mention their mother, it just would bring a pain to his heart. And he went to a, a, a Pentecostal church where they had times of prayer. And he, I remember he said he would go down to the altar and, and he would just, uh, he said, I would almost physically just beat my hands on the bench as I was trying to find a reason for this. And finally, when he was 19 years old on his birthday, he went to the grave of his mother and he stood there and he asked God. He said, God, why is it that my mother died? 19 is too young young to die and he knelt by that grave and he cried out and he said the Holy Spirit came to him at that moment and the Holy Spirit said to him he, he, he said James he said not only did Jesus die for you to live but your mother died for you to live therefore your life is doubly important go and make it count and he said that changed his whole life the trajectory of his whole life all of a sudden he realized I've got motivation and his life touched many people you say, well, pastor, is all this biblical, this reinterpretation of one's life? Let's look at it for a moment. Where am I at here today? Man, I'm preaching a long time, ain't I? I mean, you want me to quit? Okay, y'all, thanks for being honest. John 9, a man was born blind. I'm almost done anyway, y'all. He was born blind. The common interpretation of that world was that if you were born blind somebody sinned either you or your parents must have sinned in order for this horrible thing to have come upon you and for God to have cursed you with blindness so that was the interpretation of his life and one day even Jesus disciples as they were dealing with this man Jesus own disciples said who sinned his this young man or or his parents that he was born blind and Jesus said these words. He said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so the work of God might be displayed in his life. You know what Jesus did? He gave that young man a new interpretation of his life. Hello? I can imagine that from that point on, after Jesus healed him, he didn't walk around anymore thinking, I've been cursed by God. No, he realized that God had done something to bring glory to his Father. Amen in heaven. Perhaps the greatest example of a reinterpretation of the facts of someone's life, and I'm going to close with this in just a moment, is the person of Joseph. What were the facts of his life? I remember the story of Joseph. Let me give you some of the facts of his life. Scorned by his brothers because of a God-given dream. Sold off into slavery by his own brothers. Carried off to Egypt. Becomes the head of Potiphar's house only to be falsely accused of adultery and put into prison only to be forgotten about by a man who promised that he would bring his case before the king, before the pharaoh, and finally, God raised him up to be the second in command. You remember the story of all of Egypt. But here's my question today. How many hours did Joseph pray as a slave? How long did he spend with God in that prison cell? How many hours, even as second in command, as Pharaoh? How, how, how many hours uh, you know, did he spend in prayer? Because at the end of his life, you see, he had a completely different interpretation of his life than a typical person would have done. A typical person would have said, oh yeah, now that daddy's gone, you rascals who sold me off into slavery, you're in real serious trouble with me, seeing that I'm the second in command of the most powerful nation on the earth at that time. But no, that was not Joseph's heart. Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20 he was able to say this this is a reinterpretation of his life he said but as for you you meant evil against me but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive amen I'm just here today to tell you that God wants to give you his interpretation and the last point is this. Once God gives you that interpretation of the disappointments of your life, we encourage you to walk it out. That's what this man must have done in Psalms 116 and verse number 9. 
rather than spending his life stumbling and in tears with the cords of, of death and, and, and everything wrapped about him. This is what he said in verse number 9. He said that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. No longer were, was his soul plagued by death. No longer were his eyes filled with tears. No longer were his feet slipping. But he walked with his held head held high, understanding and knowing that God meant it for good in his life, that God was going to be with him. Amen. Would you stand with me? Can we just give the Lord a big hand of praise today? Amen. As good as God is. God wants you to learn how to pray through to victory.